Shakespeare spent half his life in London and wrote all his plays here. They were performed next to the River Thames in an area packed with taverns, brothels and theatres. This is what remains of the Rose Playhouse, where Shakespeare and Christopher Marlowe presented their work. The red lights mark out the stage and the pit where the groundlings stood. These were the people who heard Shakespeare's words for the first time. The original Globe Playhouse stood opposite. And next door is Bear Gardens, once home to an amphitheater for bear and bull baiting. And this is the reconstructed Globe Theatre. To mark the 400th anniversary of Shakespeare's death this month, the Globe has commissioned a series of short films based on his plays. They will be screened all along the riverbank in a project called The Complete Walk. Each film is shot where the play is set, from filthy London to fair Verona, and they make rich connections between poetry and place. To do what service am I sent for hither? The resignation of thy state and crown to Henry Bolingbroke. Here, cousin. Seize the crown. On this side my hand, and on that side yours. Now is this golden crown like a deep well that owes two buckets, filling one another, the emptier ever dancing in the air, the other down, unseen and full of water. I thought you had been willing to resign. My crown I am, but still my griefs are mine. Are you contented to resign the crown? I, no, no. As far as we know, Shakespeare didn't travel very far. There's a sort of opaque period in the 1580s where he disappears out of documented sight, and we don't know where he went during that time. But I think we can be fairly certain he didn't go to everywhere he wrote about. But I think what everyone forgets is that London was a thoroughly cosmopolitan city, that uh, there were lots of travellers here, uh, and that the best way of information about places or people or history or geography moving is through speech and through conversation. His own company of actors around him had worked a lot on the continent. The uh, English theatrical scene was thoroughly Europeanized and plays came from London, which was like the Hollywood of its day. It was a sort of play factory and shot out around Northern Europe and all across Europe in English. Then beyond that, there was all the writing that he absorbed, like the sort of unbelievable sponge that he was. And there's a lot of visual material. There's a lot of visual material in terms of um, form of woodcuts or frontispieces or paintings or tapestries of Athens, of Vienna, or of Rome, whatever. So he took these descriptions and then reimagined them onto the stage for his audiences. Did going to the actual locations themselves shed, shed any new light for you on the plays? It's sort of just a further concoction. It's a further level of um, taking his imagination to, in a way. If you take his idea of what Athens is, which was very much about what his idea of London was and you know how venal and how corrupt and how easily attacked with satire London was, and then he sort of transposed that to Athens. But he also had a sense of Greek literature. And if you plonk those speeches and you put it in front of the Acropolis, it's resonant and it clashes and it conforms and it concocts something strange and new. Because if you pan round behind Simon Russell Beale's Time of Athens and you've got there the whole of modern Athens splayed out in front of you and it's a, a long speech about the iniquity of money and the iniquity of capitalism and how money distorts nature. It creates a whole collection of new thoughts. Let me look back upon thee. Thou wall that girdles in those wolves, 
dive in the earth and fence not Athens. Matrons turn incontinent, obedience fail in children. Slaves and fools pluck the grave wrinkled senate from the bench and minister in their steads. The general filths convert of the instant green virginity, do it in your parents' eyes. Now Shakespeare had this brilliant ability to get an audience to imagine a place, to see it in their mind's eye. So when it comes to filming it on location, what does that that add? Does it even reduce the experience for them? No, I don't think it reduces it at all. I think it's one of an infinity of different ways of doing or experiencing Shakespeare. And thankfully, you know, he's a great big broad umbrella that will include everything. Just the place in itself does give you a little bit of extra insight, um, most particularly with Lear and Cordelia, just escape. Uh, you know, they talk about France. Am I in my country or in France? And, you know, you're on the cliff of Dover and France is there. And you sort of forget about that because you think that Dover is a wall. But Dover is a very permeable wall and moving backwards and forwards has for, you know, several millennia been terribly easy. Uh, and so when he gets to Dover, the possibility of escaping this you know, appalling, collapsing, anarchic, disintegrating kingdom is really, really, really close. Down from the waist they are centaurs, the women all above, but to the girdle do the gods inherit. Beneath is all the fiends. There's hell, there's darkness, there's the sulfury pit, burning, scalding stench, consumption, fie, 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 pah, pah. It's been 400 years since Shakespeare died and his plays are still with us, we're still doing them. Do you hope that, that this complete walk will bring yet more people to enjoy his work? Oh God, yeah. Yes, these are tasters. I mean, they're all no, no longer than 10 minutes and they're a collection of small essences from uh, the plays that are there just to intrigue and to provoke and to excite and get people to delve further. It's lovely. I, I think, I hope that they'll also they'll have a, a life online and a life virtually uh, and that in this day and age of um, concentrated and abbreviated attention spans, you know, there'll be a way of introducing people to Shakespeare's work and to intrigue them and provoke them to, to look more and further. We haven't scratched the surface of what Shakespeare can do in the world or how far he can go in the world or how many different people he can talk to. The first time that we smell the air, we wail and cry. I will preach to thee, Mark. When we are born, we cry. And we are come to this great stage Fools. <laughs>